Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a coffee table. Yep, today I'll be making a coffee table, not a knife. You know, every few months I like to do a non-knife related project just for fun. My wife wanted a new coffee table for the uh, living room, so I figured I would oblige. So look, I'm not a woodworker. Why would you even want to watch this? Well, it's sort of a metal worker's take on woodworking. And you'll probably see me do some stuff that, you know, most people wouldn't do. Uh, and maybe you'll learn something as a result. Plus, I gotta say, the coffee table came out pretty sweet. All right, let's jump into it. The coffee table will be made mostly from walnut. In this case, I'm starting with eight quarters lumber. I picked it out by hand from Peach State Lumber outside Atlanta where I lived. This will make for a thick, heavy table. The reason I'm using eight quarters as opposed to say four quarters will be clear enough later in the build. I'll also use a nice piece of curly maple that I picked up at the same place a while back. All told, with the crazy prices of lumber right now, I shelled out about six bills just for the lumber. I also bought a bunch of stainless steel hardware for the legs. These big old suckers are called sidewalk bolts, two inches long, three eighths in diameter. Matching T-nuts. Also, 1.75 inch ID stainless steel pipe from onlinemetals.com. And that's it for material. I'll start by running the lumber through my jointer. This takes a while and filled two entire ginormous shop vacs with shavings. I'm running the full length pieces through the jointer. The table obviously isn't going to be eight feet long, but this gets me around any snipe issues and gives me the option of orienting the lumber however I want, plus anything that's left over has already been jointed and I don't have to do it later. All right, quick note here, you asked and I answered. You know, over the years, I've had tons of viewers who've asked me how to get started as a knife maker. So I've come up with a free PDF that gives my top five hints for how to get started in knife making. You know, a lot of people just don't know how to take that first step. Hey, I've been there, but I'll give you the hookup. Just click the link in the description for my free PDF and it'll give you all the information you need. Jumpstart your knife making hobby or career with these super useful hints. Like I said, totally free. All right, let's get back to work. As you'll see, the plan is to have a single contrasting strip of this beautiful curly maple. So to get that to full thickness, I'll need to construct a single piece of lumber by gluing up maple to walnut. Now I'll figure out roughly which sections I want for the table and then hack out the pieces I want. Again, leaving them a little oversized to allow for snipe. Once I've gotten all the twists and ripples out with the jointer, I'll run them through the planer to get the other side flat. This is where you really get snipe. You can minimize snipe by running one board in after another, but with a cheap little planer like this and these really big chunks of wood, it's just too much gymnastics for one guy to handle. So, snipe it is. If possible, I always plane outside my shop because of the huge amount of shavings it produces. By the way, if you're one of my knife guys and new to woodworking, snipe is a little area at the ends of planed lumber where the lumber kind of hogs out this deeper cut and that really throws off that nice flat surface you're working so hard to get. And that, if you're gluing a bunch of things together, obviously ruins the cleanness of that joint. So you have to chop it off later. So I'm just going to tell you right now, this is going to be kind of an odd project. It's not really a how-to, it's a how I did it. Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to be doing it my way using a very weird collection of tools, some for woodworking, some for metalworking, and I bet not one in a thousand of my viewers has all the tools that I use, but that's just the way it is. That's how this project's going to work. So in that spirit, I'll gild the lily a little. 
Well, sort of. Look, it's important to understand that this table will not be made with a box underneath it to support it. There won't be any support members attaching the legs together. So the joinery for the top needs to be pretty decent. Otherwise, if you put a lot of weight on the table, it might just snap in half. To make it strong and stable, I'll be using dowels to attach the sections together. Using my manual mill, I'll drill half inch holes to admit dowels. In order to use a technique like this, the holes have to be extremely precisely dimensioned, as opposed to more forgiving methods like biscuits. So I'm using the digital readout on my mill to space them at exactly 18 inch intervals. This is an enormous hassle, has to be set up pretty meticulously and would be way easier with some kind of jig. But I don't have a jig, so I'm doing it the metal worker way. Then slap it all together to make sure everything fits. You definitely don't want to get the glue up and realize that some of the holes are out of alignment. Gotta say, when you do woodworking to metalworking tolerances, it comes out pretty sweet. Now, if I were a real woodworker, I'd glue it up and then use a track saw to trim the ends of the table all at one throw. But I don't have a track saw, so instead I kludge my way through it by attaching the pieces to each other one by one aligning them with the dowels and the holes, and then using each individual piece as a cutting guide for the subsequent cut. This actually didn't work out as poorly as I expected, so the ends were fairly close to being flat. Close, but not exactly right. So in the next stage, I'm going to move on to my CNC machine. I'll secure one of the two boards that will eventually make up the outer two pieces of the table and mill out some pockets where the legs will fit. First, on the top, I'll mill the recess where the sidewalk bolt will fit. All right, now let me back up a little bit just so that you can see where I'm going and we'll take a quick look at the somewhat goofy joinery technique, if that's even the right word for it, that I'm using to attach the legs to the tabletop. There's a bolt on the top and that runs through the tabletop and then there's a T-nut that's attached to the leg which fits tightly into a one inch deep pocket in the bottom of the table. The bolt then attaches to the T-nut, draws the whole thing together, and then it'll all be glued up. Now, not to nerd out too much here on this joint, but the T-nut and bolt are semi-cosmetic, I would say. See, T-nuts are really made to be drawn the opposite direction, in towards the nut. So tightening the bolt here, the way I'm doing it, will actually serve to pull the T-nut out of the leg, which obviously you don't want to have happen. Now, I've got some ways to make sure that that doesn't happen, but the point here is that basically all the T-nut does is stabilize this super cool looking bolt and keep the leg from rotating. The leg itself will be held in more by epoxy than by the bolt, though the bolt will keep everything lined up and stabilized. Again, the main idea is to have a cool visual contrast between metal and wood more than some perfect joint. Anyway, we'll mill a nice tight hole for the bolt to go through, then a small pocket for the head of the bolt, then a little chamfer just because, and that'll be repeated for each corner of the table. Then the boards are all flipped over and I'll mill out the pocket that each leg will slide into. Now I'll go ahead and glue up the tabletop using Tight Bond 3.
Here, I'm using pipe clamps to hold everything together. After letting the glue cure overnight, I'll start getting all my surfaces flat. I'll begin on the bottom, which by design is a little more uneven than the top. After cleaning up the glue and doing some really rough sanding, I'll use a Japanese plane to start truing up the joints between the boards. I'm not really going nuts here, just trying to make sure that the ends are nice and clean and it seems kind of generally flat. Then I'll sand for a while. Now I could either make this glass smooth or skip it. It's really just a matter of taste since this is the bottom of the table. But I'm looking at it as sort of a rehearsal for the top to see how the wood responds to the plane and the sanding and just kind of to get myself into the rhythm of flattening the top because that's obviously the most important part. Now, flattening the top. This time I'm a lot more meticulous about the hand planing, going in all directions, checking flatness as I go. Now because of the way I milled the dowels, the top's actually pretty good, but obviously it's not perfect. So this is all just a matter of dinking along as carefully as possible, trying to be aware of the grain and not to produce any tear out. I'm semi-successful with that, but eventually the whole thing's pretty good. Then it's time for sanding. I start with 80 grit on the orbital, then move up the ladder, eventually going up to grits that only a metal worker would be dumb enough to use on wood. The result, though, is a super flat, super smooth surface. All right, so this video is threatening to become endless, so I'm going to break it in half, and I'll run the second part of it tomorrow. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com